Shopify. I'm gonna go ahead and get us started so we don't run out of time. Um, but just if you want to log in the computers, like some of them may not be working because we haven't used the slide this summer. Um, you can you're, feel free to use your personal computer. To log in on our computers, you need to use your uh, my your SWU email address as the username and then your my SWU password. Don't use your ID, it does not work. All right, so I did, for those of you who missed out, I do have this little survey if you don't mind filling that out. And again, if you want to fill it out later, you can just leave it upstairs on our circulation desk if you don't have time to do it today. Um, and then I, I, you have this handout, and this again, this is what I'm going to go over today. So I just kind of printed it out for you so you would have it a little cheat sheet. My name is Stacy Powell. I'm the research and instruction librarian here at SWU. Um, you, probably, you guys may have uh, dealt with Heather Gray. She is my partner, uh, but she does mostly the online world, so you're probably more familiar with her. She's upstairs doing your next section, so you'll have her at the next session, uh, but we're splitting. I do the traditional students, so I deal with those students here on campus mostly, so you may not be familiar with me. Uh, Heather, um, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with. I am going to go over uh, the basics of library resources and searches today, and again, I, this handout is kind of like the guideline of what I'll be going over. Uh, some of this information you may already know, but this is what Dr. Strike asked us to go over. Uh, some of it may be new. I hope that you gain something valuable from today. And again, if you give us that feedback, we'll know if um, we need to, to tweak things next time. Uh, if you have any questions, just please let me know. Uh, there is a bathroom on this floor. I think if you go straight down this hallway and take a left, there's a men's bathroom and a women's bathroom. Uh, please feel free if you need to go to the bathroom to get up and go. If you have any questions, just raise your hand, just let me know, blurt it out. Um, I don't know that it'll take the whole time. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, we'll see. Um, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna mainly start at like where you need to start your research, which is the library's website. Um, so hopefully you know where it's at. I'm on just swoo.edu and the library's website is under the academics tab. So if you just click library, that's where it's at. So this is like your home base for your research. We've tried to lay this out where you can find what you're needing. So up here at the top, we put articles and e-journals. I know it's hard to see for those of you up close, um, but this is the main thing that our students are searching. So we put it up at the top and then we put this uh, category down here books, scores, DVDs, and more. So if you're specifically looking for books, you're not looking for articles, this is that section. And then we have the research tools. Heather's going to go over more of this in her session. She's going to talk about APA formatting, uh, things like that, and the research tools. So a lot of stuff I'm not going to go over, you're going to hear it in the next session. I'm going to mainly be talking about how to search and find your sources for your dissertation. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go over. Um, if you have any um, questions, we do have, uh, we always post our current hours up here. You know, we have summer hours right now. Uh, we have the Ask a Library and Chat feature. This is only operational during our open hours. So this is not um, live when at, uh, on Sundays or Saturdays right now. It's just when we're here. Um, but if you are on our website and you're looking for some things, you're having trouble logging in, you're having trouble finding uh, articles, and you can just click on this and it'll let you know. It'll tell you if we're um, on it or not. And it's just a really handy feature. Uh, we respond right away. We can send you links, um, things like It's just any live chat you use them for on the website. I have uh, included my direct contact information and Heather's on this sheet. Uh, I am very, I, I'm very efficient at responding to emails. Email is my preferred uh, method of contact. Uh, if you call my office, I may not answer. I'll, I'm not always in there. I work on the circulation desk a lot. So email is probably going to be quicker for you, but I did include both of those. But um, if you lose this information and you need to know how to get a hold of us, this information section right here, we are on the under the about us. And if you click on that, it will take you to, and this is going to be slow because we're all on the computer right now, so bear with us. 
but you can come and scroll down here and you can see the library staff tab expand that and then here's Heather's info and here's my info we do have other librarians here we have our director Shannon Brooks Joni Addis is our technical services library and these people can help you as well if Heather and I happen to not be around feel free to contact any of them um, so just make sure that you know that we're here for you even though you're not on campus we're here for you and if you're not getting a response from Heather because uh, she might be out or something she was out the other week um, just email me and what we partnership and we try to help uh, the students equally so just keep that in mind okay so that's just a quick overview of the library website we're going to go and look in these databases real soon. I also wanted to mention that you do have in my SWU, under the Students tab, uh, you have some of the redundant things that we have on the website. If you go to the um, Doctoral Student Resources tab right here and click on it, there is the section called Lit, Lit Review and Library Resources over here. And so a lot of the stuff that Heather and I will be going over with uh, today will be directly linked on this as well. So you can choose your, your method. You can start from here, or you can start from here, and we've put the main, the main search methods up here. And then what Heather will talk about later, like citing sources and things like that. So those are your two locations we recommend you starting from. Um, all right, so we're going to move on now to, I'm going to just kind of go uh, down. So we're going to start with one search, and then we're going to go into the specific databases. Then we're going to talk about interlibrary loan and things like that. All right, so one search is what it says. It's one search that searches everything. It's searching all of our databases. It's searching our physical books we have here at the library physical books that we have off campus at the institutions that we have a partnership with, and it's searching ebooks. It is a very broad search. It is like Googling. Um, so keep that in mind when you use OneSearch. It is, you're going to get a lot of results, and it's not going to be specific to databases. It is a good place to start. If you are just starting your, your research process, um, it's just a good place to get a general idea. A lot of times when you do a topic search in one search, you will see your main results, your good results will tell you um, what databases they come from. And then you can be like, okay, a lot of these are coming from Eric. I might need to just go into Eric and do my search. Or a lot of these might be coming to um, psychology articles full text. I might need to go to that database. So it's just kind of like a good uh, place to, to um, start dis uh, discovering what's out there. Um, so I'm going to just briefly go over it. When you are off campus or you're on your computer for the first time on campus, you will get this screen. We get a lot of phone calls, a lot of chats, a lot of emails about this. Um, how do I get into this? I can't, they'll say I can't log into the website. Um, this is always, do not use your student ID as your username. That only works for my SWU. It does not work for anything else on our campus. Use your full SWU email address. Um, and then your password is your MySWU password. So what normally happens is that people are not putting in their full email address or they're trying to use their user ID. And that won't work. So I'm going to put mine in real quick. If you have any trouble with it, I've already skipped the screen, but you'll see that um, it did have where you could reset your password or you could contact IT for help. All right, so this is what uh, OneSearch looks like. Um, you probably are aware you've been using these databases already, but most of them, this is what they look like. Some of them will look a little bit different, but this is what most of our databases look like. Um, so it's just a very simple, basic search. Um, you can start here or you could go to your advanced search whichever you want to do. So this is advanced and it's got a lot of limiters on it. Um, it's got, it uses these Boolean. I put um, the Boolean operators and uh, on this little handout, but it kind of has them built in up here on the advanced search so it does it for you. So you can check those if you want to. 
It allows you to look specifically in certain areas of the document, like maybe you want to search all the text. I would just leave it blank if you wanted to search all the text. You wanted to search an author, you wanted to search for a specific <laughs> title, uh, the abstract. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute when we get to ProCrest a, a little bit more in depth. But searching the abstract, just putting in your keyword terms and then selecting abstract is an excellent way to start your research. Because if your keyword term is featured in the abstract, then that article or that dissertation is more than likely going to be relevant to your research. Um, so if you just leave it blank up here, you might be getting back a lot of results that aren't very relevant. So I do like to use the keyword term search and then make it specific to the abstract. So I'll click on that and you can put in like curriculum planning. And it is a lot like Google. Our databases do kind of like think for you. They assume when you start typing, do you mean this, 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 and this, and that comes in handy. So you may want to use that. And you'll notice that it features two sections, popular terms, and then it features publications that actually have your keyword search in the publication title. So those may not, might be things you want to search. So I'm just going to do curriculum planning. I'm going to select the abstract feature and I'm going to click search. And so what it's looking for is the words curriculum and planning featured in the abstract. Um, that's one way of doing a keyword search. Sometimes though, as you will note, that it's looking for curriculum <coughs> and it's looking for planning to, separately and together. So you're going to get a lot of results, but if you specifically want the curriculum planning to be together, you put it in quotes. And I'm sure you guys <coughs> know that. But just to reiterate that, that that helps narrow it down even further. So if you put it in, in quotation marks, then it's going to narrow it down. All right, so that's just a, a good tip for helping you find some sources. We're going to move on now to the limiter section. These are in all of our databases. They're your best friend. Don't neglect to use these over here. They're going to be in a little different place in ProQuest. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in most of our uh, other databases, our EBSCO databases, they're going to be over here on the left-hand side. They are also, when you are doing your advanced search, before you even search a term, they're on the advanced search page. I just prefer to do my search, get my results, and then come over to the left-hand side and do my limiters. So we always recommend that you select full text. Um, so click full text. That's going to take away, usually, anything that we don't have access to. Now, because you are writing a dissertation, you might need access to some of the things that we don't have. So if you're not getting results back, clicking the full text, then take the full text away um, and read the abstracts. Abstracts are always available, even if we don't have access to it. So if you come across a article or a document, an ebook that we don't have access to, but you've read the abstract and you're like, this is perfect, I need this, then, then you will request an interlibrary loan, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But we always recommend you try full text first and see if you can find stuff that is available. So click the full text, and then if you did, if it has to be peer reviewed, or scholarly, click, click peer reviewed. Sometimes it'll say scholarly. So click that. And so again, it's narrowing your results down. And then um, date range. Um, so if you have, a, if you're looking at a specific date range, um, then you can just move the slider or you can go and type in a specific date range. So you're probably going to want uh, things much more current. So I'm just going to type in 2010. And so now I'm looking for things published between 2010 and 2019. That's full text, peer reviewed. Um, most of our full text documents will just have a PDF link or you can do an HTML full text. Sometimes you will get, um, especially in our education databases, you'll get the full text finder if you guys come across that. Um, it is a little wonky. It doesn't always work. Um, so we might see that when we go into education databases. But if you get the full text finder, it's not showing you the PDF um, link and it doesn't work, let us know, okay? 
But the PDF full text um, usually works. You click on it uh, just like any PDF, or you can click up here, or you can hit this little preview button, and this will show you um, the bibliography information of the document, and it will give you an abstract. So here's the abstract for this. So I always recommend doing the preview first and reading the abstract. And if it's not relevant to your research, then move along. And then to do the PDF, just click on it, open it up, and here's your document. Heather's going to go over all of this and citation and stuff like that, so I'm not going to talk about much of that. I'm just showing you how to find the sources. Heather's going to go um, in depth into what you do, saving these sources, citing them, and things like that. Um, a good thing, if you find an article that is really good, um, scroll down to its reference page. And we'll talk about that uh, in ProQuest as well. Come down to the reference page and check its references. There may be some references that we have. You can copy and paste uh, the title and go into OneSearch. And so I can say, this reference sounds pretty good. I'm going to copy that title. So you just copy it, go back to the OneSearch page, and just paste it in. And it will let you know if we have it or not. If we don't have it and you want it, that's when you interlibrary loan request it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the reference pages are your friends. If you find good articles, check that article's references. It's just a really good um, tip. Also, you can come down here. We have more limiters. You'll notice that you can sort the things by sources. If you're doing peer-reviewed, it's going to be searching academic journals. Um, so you don't really need to do it by that. Uh, but let's say maybe you want to look for a specific book. You can expand this and see if uh, books is an option. Sometimes it is. And you also notice when you are searching, you're going to get things all over the world. So you'll see that some of these are in different languages. So you can come down here and just say, I only want the English ones because I can't read Chinese. Um, also, I don't really care about what they're you know, doing in China with education. I'm, I want to focus on the United States, things like that. And you can come down here and look at their subjects. So you can come down here and say, okay, I want to look at curriculum planning, um, curriculum design. So you can click on multiple ones of these. You can click, you know, multiple ones, and it narrows your search down even more. Just go in there and play around with these. A geography is a good one as well. Again, if you want to uh, limit it to the United States, you click that, and it updates your results. So if I click that, I'm just going to get articles about curriculum planning uh, that deal with the United States. So the limiters are your friends. Uh, make sure you use them. They're really handy. Um, we also, at the top, we have these journals A to Z list. Perhaps you are aware you guys are professionals. You're all principals or teachers. Um, you're aware of your professional journals. So perhaps you want to go and find a particular journal and search it. Um, so you can go to this A to Z list, and then it's a topic list. So if you want to click on education, <coughs> you can click on the education link, and then it is an A to Z list of education journals. And so you can go uh, directly into them. We don't have full access to all of them, or we have full access in a certain time range. So you might have journal art journals that we have full access up to 2015, but we don't have current. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So you can go and explore them. You can search within the publication right here. You can type in your search terms and see what we have access to. Just please keep in mind that if you need the article and we don't have access to it, enter library long request. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. All right. So that's just an overview, a brief overview of one search. Again, it's just a good place to just do a broad search and kind of get a feel for what's out there. We're going to move on to the next thing, which is databases by title, databases by subject. The databases by title is an A to Z list of our databases, and there's a blurb for each of them that explains what they are. So if you are back here on the databases by subject, we don't have that blurb. So if I go to the education and curriculum planning, 
you'll see that none of these have the blurb, so you might be like, what is that? What's that about? Go back to that A to Z list and it'll tell you what it's about. So these are the same thing. These are just categorized by the different types of majors here on campus. And then this is the A to Z list. So databases by subject, we recommend just going to the education and curriculum planning and click on it. And I wanted to highlight uh, this specific one right here, education search interface. Uh, this is uh, the best one to use in my opinion and Heather's opinion because it's searching five specific databases for you. It's searching Eric, um, it's searching psych articles. So if I click on that, so if you didn't catch it, it's the education search interface. Um, and I'm gonna show you which databases it's searching. Just click on the show all and it's showing you, well, why is it not showing me? Okay, well. Usually it shows, it did earlier, it usually does, but it shows you, it's doing education full text, it's doing Eric, it's doing psych articles. Uh, maybe if I click on this one. Well, it's searching five, I assure you, I'm not sure why it's not working down here, but anyway, it's searching five education databases that are really helpful to you. So we recommend you use them that if you've tried one search, you've gotten some good results, but you need more specific things to education, go to the education search interface right here. And again, it's on your, um, on your little handout. And then you can also explore the individual databases. There's Eric is a good one. Um, education with full text is a good one. Um, primary search. Um, things like that, psych articles, but again, education search interface is supposed to search all of these. These databases aren't, they don't jive very well with ProQuest, so we're going to talk specifically about ProQuest in a minute, um, so they don't always search ProQuest very well, so we recommend that you don't look for your dissertations that you want to read um, in any of these databases, go specifically to ProQuest for those. Uh, let's see, so I'm in this uh, education search interface. I wanted just to highlight some of these search tips. Again, just like with OneSearch, you've got your limiters down here. You can go ahead and click them now if you want to, or you can do your search and then click them after you get to your results screen. Same setup, you know, you can do the and or not things that I talk about on here. You can do keyword searches. And they even have more options than um, <clears throat> OneSearch has, so, but you can still search abstract, things like that. One really key handy part of this database, and this is not in OneSearch, but there's this thesaurus feature up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you come up here and click on thesaurus, you can type in a word right here, and it's going to give you other subject terms that are... Um, similar. So if you typed in um, curriculum planning and just click browse, it's going to give you other search terms. So that's handy. So let's say you, you tried curriculum planning and you didn't get anything good. You can come down here and see if any of this stuff works. Um, so you can try this as well. You can even click directly on the links. So this one's like teacher participation in curriculum. Like you just click on it and it automatically searches that the source keyword term search for you. Um, it's slow right now and breaks it down. So the source is really good in narrowing your subject, your search terms, your keyword terms. It's just a really good handy uh, feature. It also has the publications. Uh, on one search, it was called A to Z. On this database, it's called publications. And again, you can click on it. And it's an A to Z list of um, academic journals, professional journals, things like that. So you can come up here and do your search and look for those specific journals. And again, Heather is going to go in more depth about saving these things and creating folders and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can do advanced search. Always remember to do your full text. Um, you can go ahead and do your publication date. Do your scholarly or peer-reviewed, um, things like that. So 
that I'm not going to go. It's very similar to OneSearch, but again, it's just searching specifically for education um, articles. All right, let's go back up. All right, we're going to go back to the home page. Uh, I wanted to, uh, it's the last thing on here because it's not, um, it's not the best thing, but just, we do have open access. Um, open access is becoming more and more popular. Um, so a lot of institutions are developing their own um, publications that are free because buying these journals are very expensive. Um, and colleges and institutions are becoming more and more about sharing information and making it discoverable for everyone equally and not being about how much money you have and things like that. So there, there are a lot more open access things coming out there. So if you click on that, you can go and look at these things. And these are things that you don't, that are free. It's kind of like using Google Scholar, but they're vetted. Um, so they're published by like NYU or uh, you can't even look for dissertations. Some of these institutions are archiving their dissertations so you don't have to use ProQuest. It's just another uh, element to add to your research. Like if you click on this thesis and dissertations, you can see that the, these are all ones that are vetted. They're trustworthy. We recommend you doing this instead of going to Google and trying to find one that way. These are journals. Um, and then let's see if we've got any. We have the International Journal of Education Resource. This is a completely open source um, journal that you can use copyright infringement free. So just wanted to highlight that really quickly. It's up here at the top right there. All right, so I've been talking about interlibrary loan. This is the link. If you come across an article and we don't have it and you need it, just go to this link and it reminds you to please confirm that we don't have it. Please double check in um, Pascal Swoocat if it's a book. Please double check um, article databases that we don't have it. Because ProQuest does not cooperate well with OneSearch and with some of our databases, we do recommend that you go into ProQuest, especially if it's a, a dissertation, and see if it's there before you go to this link and ask us to borrow it for you. If you don't, it's okay. We're not gonna like fuss at you or anything like that. We're just gonna say, oh, it is already available in ProQuest. But um, if it is an article, if it's a book, then you do, you click this right here. And we, I'm gonna talk about Pascal in a minute. Are you guys aware of Pascal? Do you know what Pascal is? Okay, well, I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but if you need to request a book, and it's outside of South Carolina, it's not through, we don't have it, and Pascal doesn't have it, I'll talk about Pascal in a minute, that's where you go. If it's an article, just click on the article link and fill in this information. The, as, the stuff that has the asterisk you have to put in, so it's mainly your information, and then put in as much item information as you can, so uh, put in at least the title of the article, um, you don't have to do all of this stuff, but if you have that stuff, that will help us. Articles are usually very speedy. We can usually get those within a day because the, the institution is going to scan it and email it to us, and we'll email it to you. So it's usually within a day. If you're going to ask for a book from uh, another institution, it could take two weeks. Um, so just keep that in mind. But articles, we don't want you to pay or buy any of these articles. If you need an article, let us know and we will see if we can borrow it from an institution. So I just wanted to highlight that for you. Um, so you guys aren't familiar with Pascal Cat. Um, Pascal Cat, we are a part of the consortia of all of the universities in South Carolina. So and that it's Pascal stands for like Palmetto something something. <laughs> anyway, um, we can borrow from USC, from Clemson, from College of Charleston from Furman. These are books and ebooks. These are not articles. We can't borrow from their databases. So just put that, uh, file that away in your head. This is not articles. This is books and ebooks. We can borrow anything from these institutions. So if you click on this Pascal Cat link, this is a catalog that searches all those institutions. Again, books or ebooks only. 
So if you look up here, I'm just going to just do education. I'm going to get a tons of results back. But if you put in education, and it's going to, these are all the books. And you can, if they have the request tab, then you can request it. And then if you see one that's an electronic resource, you can usually read it right there on your screen, just like an ebook. Um, so here's an online resource right here. Um, so you can just click on it and it'll work for you, um, the ebook. So let's just say that you want this book right here. You just click the Request It tab. And then you will put in that you're affiliated with Southern Wesleyan. Click Submit. And then it will ask for your first and last name and your student ID number. And then you click Submit. So the book will then be delivered here. This is all free of charge. It will be delivered here, and then we will find a way to get it to you. So if you're not local, we will find out what, which of these colleges is closest to you, and we'll send it to that college, and you can pick it up there. We're not going to mail it to you directly. We used to do that, but the funding got cut uh, a while back. But we'll get it to the closest institution to you. So just fill this information out, click Submit, this usually takes about three or four days, not counting the weekend. If it's over, you know, if you do it on a Friday, it's going to take more. But we usually get the book within two to three days, and then we'll get it to you as quick as possible. And then you have four weeks, and you can renew it up to one time. Um, so don't neglect this. If you need books, uh, our collection here is very small. So just keep in mind, this is a service as a student here for you to use. And there's a lot of good stuff. Clemson's going to have a lot of stuff. Uh, Furman's going to have a lot of stuff. So don't neglect the Pascal catalog. Swoocat is our catalog. So if you click on that, this is just searching what books we have here. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, ebooks, we did talk about ebooks. If you click on that, uh, Dr. Strike did ask us to order a fair amount of ebooks for this particular program. Um, so they are, if you click on the ebooks, they will be in this EBSCO ebook collection, our, our ebook central. So you uh, go into both. Uh, they don't search the same thing. So just click on it. And again, it's going to look like those databases, but this is just looking for ebooks. Um, and then if you click up here, you will see the ebooks we have, and then you can browse by category. So if you want to go and click education, you can see which ebooks that we have that deal with education. So you'll see this is one particular one, values in early childhood education, counseling gifted students. And then again, these were ones that Dr. Strike recommended we get. So I'm assuming that she means that they're good for you guys to use. And they are just like those journal articles. You can do the PDF, or you can do the EPUB. EPUB is if you have like a, a Kindle. Um, so you can download the EPUB and read it in your Kindle. Or you can, so like if you're on your phone, uh, you probably don't want to read the, the PDF. But if you're on your computer, just read the PDF. Now they're eBooks. They may take a while to upload. Um, so here is this full book, Scan It. And then you'll see the table of contents over here so you can jump around. You can also download individual um, sections, but because of copyright laws, you cannot download this whole book. So keep in mind, it's still borrowing from a library, in other words. Just like if you checked out our book upstairs, it's not yours to keep forever. Um, you can always access this link as much as possible, but you can't download it and put it on your computer. You can download up to like 100 pages or so, or a percentage of it. But you usually don't need to download it. You just need to, to remember where the link is so you can go back to it. And Heather will talk about that. Um, but you can go and check this. You can save certain pages, things like that. But again, don't neglect that the ebooks are a valuable source for you to use. And they are listed in the book section. All right, so now we're going to move over to, I'm going to talk about ProQuest. So we're going to go over ProQuest again. In the, it's in the MySWU where I showed you um, in the students tab or the doctoral students. It's also in the databases by subject and it's in the databases by title, the A to Z list. So if I go into the databases by subject, I click the education and curriculum planning, you will find ProQuest. So this is what ProQuest looks like and you can on ProQuest, you can click the ebooks so it's central. 
and it will also search the ebooks the, that I showed you a second ago. But if you don't want to search it, just leave it clicked on the dissertations and the theses. Um, so I'm just going to leave it on the dissertations and then click use select databases. And so this is what it looks like up here. So it looks different than what we've been uh, looking at. It's a completely different database, completely different company. Um, and it is specifically looking at dissertations and thesis. And it's, this is very handy in your doctoral research to read what other people who you were pursuing the doctoral wrote, making sure that your ideas are original, um, but also checking their sources that might be on the same topic. So it's just a really great, and plus reading other people's dissertations is going to help you as a writer. Hopefully you're aware of this and you've already been using it. Uh, we do have the basic search screen, we have the limiters, we have full text, and we have the, the click the doctoral dissertations only. You're probably going to want to do the doctoral dissertations only. If you don't click this, then it's going to also search master's thesis, which that might be okay. Um, but I'm going to click doctoral dissertations only, and then click full text. It has that advanced search feature, um, and this is what this looks like. This is very similar to the other ones. Uh, and you can go over here and uh, you know, refine your search however you would like. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, again, I talked about searching in the abstracts. This is a great place to do that. Um, the dissertations are you know, hundreds of pages long. Um, so just doing a keyword search in the entire text, you're going to get a lot of results back that may not be relevant. So if you go to this advanced screen and you come over here and you do the abstract and then do your keyword search, it's going to really help refine your search, hopefully, uh, and, and just make your results be better. So this is a good place to do that. Um, so if you wanted to do, I did inclusive classroom. And again, if you put your terms in quotation marks, you might have better results than if you took the quotation marks away. Play around with that. Um, so I'm going to look for inclusive classroom in just abstract. I'm going to click full text again. You always want to start with full text, like I said earlier. And then perhaps you want to limit your date. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me scroll up. Um, you have the publication date. Maybe you want to limit to the last five years. So you click last five years. <laughs> and then again, if you want to narrow it down to just doctoral dissertations. So I've selected all that. I've clicked search. Uh, I put those limiters in and then here are my results. So I have 78 results. That's pretty good. And then you can come through here. These are all the results. Um, again, the abstract, things look a little bit differently here, but there is the abstract preview. Just click on the link. It pulls the abstract. Don't let me get ahead of this. What time is this one over? 1.30? All right, we're good. Uh, so if you click on the abstract, and it's going to be slow, it pulls up the abstract so you can read it, see if this is going to be a relevant article for you. I might have to close some of this stuff down. Come on. Or you can do the PDF preview. There we go. So here's the abstract. And then again, you'll see that it has my keyword terms highlighted in yellow. And you'll see that they're next to each other. So if I hadn't put them in quotation marks, then those words inclusive and those words classroom are going to be found all over the place. And if you're searching education, classroom is going to be featured a lot. So use quotation marks. Anyway, here's the abstract. And perhaps by reading it, you can tell if it's a valuable source or not. Um, another thing that's really, really great is over here. Let's say this is good. This sounds good. You think you want to use it. We have this related items. These are other links to other dissertations on the same topic. So you can click on these, and maybe you'll find even more. And then up here, documents with shared references is another um, really handy place to go. So if you click on that, and this might be slow because it's pulling up so many, this is going to take you to documents that have very similar references to this dissertation. 
So if you find this dissertation to be really good for your work, if you click on this documents with shared references, um, and it's going to be really slow, there it goes, um, then these may also be of value to you as well. And you can come up here and sort them. So it does it by number of references in common, which you're probably going to want to use. So if you left it alone, number of references in common, this one right here is going to have the most references in common to the other dissertation. And this one will be the next, and this one will be the next. So just remember, these are really helpful in ProQuest. And again, I tried to put them down on this so that you would have that, because I know it's a lot of information to spit out at you right now. And then I also wanted to highlight, so you've got the full text PDF. Right now we're just previewing the abstract, but if you go to the reference list, if you click up here on this tab, this is really, really handy. So again, you found a dissertation that you really like. If you click on their reference list, this is the references in their published dissertation. And right here, we, if it's in blue and there's a link, that means we have full text access to it. So you can click on this and go directly to their reference article, their reference book, whatever. We have full text access to it. Um, so if I click on this, it's going to also, <laughs> we are currently troubleshooting issues with the ProQuest account. Usually it works. And if you find out that it doesn't, uh, stop, go back. Let's go back. Anyway, it, I think it's because we're all on. I'm just going to do it. Just a search. Okay, but anyway, you can click on the references. Uh, if there's not a link um, and you want to, to read the article, again, ILL it, Interlibrary Loan it. But um, you might find that we have, uh, you know, six or seven of their cited references, we might have access to them. So it's a really, really great handy tool to use. Uh, so if you find dissertations in our database, I'm having ProQuest troubles. It's just spinning, spinning, spinning. Um, use that reference tab. I use that uh, similar uh, common reference tab. Use those things. Um, it's very, very handy. And then, let's see, I'm going to go back. You can also, again, just like in the other databases, you can limit your searches by language, by university or institution. You've got, um, so I put in curriculum planning, and over here it says, do you want to narrow it down to professional development, leadership, teachers? So do you want to search these additional uh, keyword terms? And you can expand the subject categories. Perhaps you want to just look in school administration. Perhaps you just want to look at curriculum planning uh, elementary education. So you can click the include button. Maybe you want to exclude a certain subject. You can just play around with all this. Perhaps you're doing health education. Um, so you can narrow it down. So use these limiters, use these features built into these databases. They are your friend. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that ProQuest is a little different um, than other things. Search the abstract. Remember that if we don't have the article, uh, copy and paste the title and do the ILL link. Uh, let's see, we talked about ebooks, we talked about Boolean, and uh, it's on here, but use the Boolean searches. Have you ever done a search with parentheses? And so really, I mean, it narrows it down even more. There's an explanation down here of how to do that. So you can put parentheses, you can type in your word, put it in parentheses, and then you can type in and, and then maybe early childhood education. So it is going to take curriculum planning, search it first, but it's only going to search it in topics about early childhood education. Um, so that's just another way, and again, I wrote it down because it's a lot of information to take. It's on here, but it's just a way to uh, truncate your searches, narrow your searches, refine your searches so that you get better results. Um, 
the thesaurus I talked about. Oh, there are uh, truncations. Again, it's on your list. It's on the second to the last page. Not in ProQuest, but in a lot of these databases. Let's say I'm looking for a child. I wanted to look up every version of that word. I wanted to look up children. Um, so you can do like child and then, where is my, this, and then it's going to look up all the versions of the, the word child. Um, so play around with truncation with some of your words. Um, so it's really like, gen, you know, if you want to look up genetics and uh, genetic and genetically, things like that. If you just take the root word, like genetic, and then you put the asterisk, it's going to look up genetics and genetically and all that as well as genetic. So those are really great, useful tips to help you further your search even more. And then I talked about the open access. So I want to give you guys about 15 minutes left at the end here. If you have any specific questions, um, I know this is a lot to take in. So just let me know if there's something you want me to go over specifically uh, or if you just want uh, time to do your own searches and play around with it. I wanted to give you the last 15 minutes to do that. So do any of you have any questions? <laughs> All right. Well, you're welcome to just stay in here play around until you want to leave for your break in your next session. And just, I'm here, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to help you.